I've seen people sell basic Notion CRM templates for $10 or $20. So today I'm gonna to show you for free how to build one from scratch. Now this template will have your clients and your leads. For those who don't know, leads is basically a potential client. So someone who's either reached out to you or you've reached out to them. Most CRM templates are either way too basic or way too complicated that they're not actually practical on a day-to-day -day basis. This one we're building today is going to have a simple user interface so you can get all the information that you need at a glance. Subscribe for Notion tutorials, let's dive in. All right, here's our blank Notion document. We'll start with writing CRM, obviously. Now, what we're going to do is write forward slash data. Now, most CRM templates have a lot of databases, but I don't wanna do that because it's not very practical for you on a daily basis to use. So what we're going to do here is click on database for the table view and click on new empty database. And this here will be your CRM. Now I'll just make this full width. All right, what I'm gonna do is rename this name property to business. Obviously, if you're just reaching out to individuals, you might just call it, you know, name or whatever. Now we'll click on add property here. And as you can see, Notion AI starts suggesting stuff. And what we're going to do is select the text and this here will just be the contact person. So most likely when you're reaching out to a business, you'll have a specific contact or at least a specific contact person that you want to be talking to. Now what we're going to do is click on number here and this here will be the estimate. This will basically be your quote or if you do a flat rate, you know, you'll put that in here. And this one is very important to have. This is going to be the date property. And this here is going to be the first contact. We want to know when did we first contact this person? Then we'll click on plus and we're going to do another date property. And this one here will be the last contact. So the last time you contacted them. This here is extremely useful to have. And I'm going to show you different filters, sorting and groups for the CRM to make this ultra powerful. And then we'll click on plus and we're going to add another property. And this one here will be a select. Now this select here will be the status. Yes, I know there is a status property, but I prefer doing it this way. I feel like I have a bit more control when I just do it as a normal select. So this here is our CRM. What I'll do is drag status here to the end. I like having it on the left side. And what we're now going to do is separate this. So we'll have this CRM be our actual clients. So the ones who have agreed to work with us. And we're going to separate it and down here have our leads, AKA our potential clients. So we'll click here and we can add all the different status types that we want. So let's just use this here as a fitness business, for example. So we'll say signed contract. So they've actually signed up to work with you. But let's say you do app development, for example, then you would have multiple different stages. So now that we've got signed contract here, what we're going to do is write forward slash data and click on table view. But we are not going to click on new empty database. We are going to be using this one here. It's going to be a lot easier if we just have the one database to work with. So here, what I'll do is write CRM because that's what we called this. So this here is the title for it. And here I can see CRM, so I'll click there. And now as you can see, this is coming from this. And this arrow here is just saying, hey, this isn't the original one. It's actually showing you another database. And this here is the original one. So that's what this arrow means. Now this CRM here is going to be our leads. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write clients at the top here. And this here is just like normal text. And what I'm going to do is click on these six dots here and turn into, and I'm going to change this to header one. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to make some space below this, paste that, and I'll write leads. Now, so I don't see CRM and CRM here, and I'm just seeing clients and leads, what I'm going to do is click here on the settings, click on layout, and here where it says show database title, I'll hide that. And then I'll do the same thing for this. Click on layout, show database title, hide that. So now I can see clients and I can see leads. All right, so we have our clients and we have our leads. Now, if this is leads, I shouldn't be seeing anything that is a signed contract. So I don't want to have that showing up here. So what I'm going to do is filter the status here to say, don't show me anything that is a signed contract. So what we'll do is click on the filter and we will click on status. And here we'll say where the status is not signed contract. So now that isn't showing up here. So let's just add a fake person. We'll call him John. And right now he has no status. But if we were to change this to signed contract, it would jump up here. And if I were to delete that, it would jump back down here. Now on my clients, I only want to see stuff that's the signed contract. I don't want to see the stuff that's not a signed contract because they're not a client then. So what I'll do here is click on filter and I'll click on status. And what I'll do is say status is signed contract. So for the clients, I want the stuff that is a signed contract. And for the leads, I want the stuff that is not a signed contract. So we have clients and leads. Now for my clients, I want to know how much I've earned. So now what we'll do is add another property and this here will be the contract amount. So here I can see the amount. Now, if you want to see the estimate as well, we can keep that here. If you don't want to see the estimate here and you only want to see the amount, 
And what we can do is right click on estimate and we can click here on hide. So we're not deleting the property, we are simply hiding it. And we're hiding it from this view here. So as you can see in leads, we still see the estimate here. And for the leads, we probably won't want to see the amount here because we obviously don't know what the agreed amount is yet. So what I can do is right click here and I can hide this one. So in clients, we can see the amount and in the leads, we can see the estimate. Now, this here isn't very useful to me because if I have a few different businesses here and let's say this one's 1,000 and this one's 2,000, how am I meant to know how much I've earned? I don't wanna do this maths because 1,000 plus 2,000 is too difficult for me. So what I'm going to do is right click on amount and here we can do calculate and we're going to click here on more options and then sum. So this here is going to add it up for me. So I can see 1000 plus 2000 is some 3000. And obviously if I change this 2500, this is now 3500. Now, if you want, you can right click on the amount here and you can actually edit the property and we can say, do you want this as a default number or do you actually want this as dollars, for example? So I can change it to dollar now we see 1,000 plus 2,500 dollars is 3,500 dollars. And of course we can do the same thing for estimate, edit property, number, make that dollar, click on calculate, more options, sum. So now we have our clients with our amount earned and we have our leads with our estimate earnings. This here is useful to know how much we have in the pipeline. So I'd recommend having an estimate here. Now the next thing I want to know is their contact details. Now there's a bunch of different ways we could do this. You could just click on open here and just write the details here, phone number, email. That is one way and I actually prefer to do that because if you have too many properties it might just get a bit overwhelming for the eye. But if you want to have it as separate properties I'll show you how to do that. We'll click on plus and here we'll click on email and then we'll click on plus again and we'll click on phone. And then I can scroll here from side to side like that. So I have email and phone easy access. Now because this is the same database as this that information is still up here, but it is just not being shown. So for visible properties, we don't have email and phone being shown, neither do we have estimate being shown. And of course, you could add other properties if you wanted, such as URL maybe, or a file, something like that. But for leads, it might be useful to have this easy access, but I wouldn't recommend having it up here for your clients. It just gets a bit too long. Let's say the business is called Jimmy. I open this up here. I can see all of these details anyway. I can see the email. I can see the phone. And of course, you know, I can drag this around. So email, phone, contact person. I can put this here in any order that I want. All right, let's add some statuses here. And then I'll show you two useful views for our leads. So the first one here is just for us to acquire details. So I'll write the details. So we would just put this in when we've actually acquired the details for us to reach out to them, like email and phone. If you have a VA or something, then you could share this and their job is just to fill out different details here. The next one is initial. So this is just the initial contact, the very first time that you reach out to them. So we have details and then initial. After they most likely don't respond to you, then we have the follow-up. So now we have the details, initials, follow-up. And let's say your goal for the business is to get a meeting with them. So then we'll have the next step be meeting. So we have details, initial follow-up and then meeting and then if the meeting goes well then we have signed contract now obviously you might also get declined so let's add declined here and obviously if we want to change these colors we can make declined red that makes sense the signed contract that should be green meeting i think orange makes sense to that follow-up let's say yellow initial yeah purple makes sense and then details let's just do gray so this just visually makes more sense now now i'll just enter some random ones like this so if A is details, B is initial, C is follow-up, D is meeting, and E is declined. So we have all of these ones here. What I wanna do here is put these in order because right now, let's say decline goes up here, initial down here. It's, it's getting very confusing for me. This isn't a very useful view for me. So what we're going to do is click here on settings. And what we're going to do is use group. Now, if you haven't used group before, it's incredibly powerful. And we'll group this by the status. So now we have declined details, follow-up initial meeting. And as you can see, this here is a bit of a strange order. So what we're going to do is reorder these. So we'll click back on settings and we'll click on group. And here we can just move these about. First, we want details. After that, we want the initial. After that, we want the follow-up. Then we want the meeting. And at the bottom, we want declined. And these are toggles, so you can open and close these like that. So hour one, when you're working, your job might just be to add stuff to the details here, and you're just getting a bunch of details. After that, you might be doing the initial reach out, another session, you might be working on the follow-up and so forth. So this here is a list view, but it could be useful to have a board view as well. So what we're going to do is rename this table here, and we're going to rename this to list. And what I'm going to do now is right-click on list and do duplicate. And this here is going to be the board view. 
So what we'll do is change the layout and we're going to change it to board. So now you can see it goes sign contract, decline details, follow up, initial and meeting, which again isn't the right order for us. So what I'm going to do is click on these settings, click here on group and here I can reorder them. So sign contract, I don't want to see that in this view. And of course, we'll just reorder these again. Details, initials, follow up, meeting, declined. And let's say this meeting here goes well. You'll simply click here and change the status from meeting to sign contract. And now it appears up here. And let's say it was $4,000. As you can see, this automatically here gets summarized. All right, let's just add some more HIJ. And what I'll do is say the last contact for this one was today. That one was last week. That one was that time. There we go. So I've just added some last contacts. Now, as you can see, this order here doesn't make a lot of sense. It's just kind of random. We want this to flow naturally because this here is quite confusing for us. So what we're going to do is use the sort feature. So I'll sort this by, and then we want to sort this by the last contact. You could sort this by the first contact, but I think it makes more sense to sort it by the last contact. And now I can do that by descending or ascending. I think we should do it as ascending. That way I know whoever was the longest time ago, so July 3rd, that way I know to follow up with them first rather than following up with this one first. Now what we can do is the same thing for the board view. So here I'll click on sort and it will sort these in these columns here. So I'll sort by last contact and ascending. Now, obviously I would have to click here in order to see that information. So if you want to see that information before clicking here on the name, then what we can do is click on the settings here and click on properties. And here I can say, what do I want to see before actually clicking on the name? So you might want to see, for example, phone, but I don't think that makes a lot of sense for this board view. I think the thing that you want to see quickly here is probably last contact. So now here I can see before clicking on it, the last contact. And as you can see, it's in order here, July 3rd, July 11th, July 15th, 21st. So you've reached out to I on July 3rd and now you're doing a follow up. You'll simply drag that here like that and we'll change this here to today. It's as simple as that. You've now done your follow up. This here is an incredibly simple CRM. We have the board view and we have the list view and then we can easily convert them to clients once they actually become clients. So let's say follow up, they sign up immediately before even doing a meeting. We'll just do sign contract and there we go. They're showing up here. We can add the amount 1000. There we go. It's updating my CRM. This here is incredibly simple and very effective. I hope you found this useful. If you want to learn more about Notion databases, then click on this video here where I go into detail about filters, sorting and groups.